fit looks like right now? What? You ever, ever watch Talk to Me yet? No. Look, look, oh, look. yeah. <laughs> I look yeah, exactly yeah. like the Talk yeah, to Me girl, right? Say. Look at this shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking in the mirror. I'm like, yo, why do I look so familiar for some reason? I just <laughs> Wait, is that the girl that goes, yeah, oh, yeah. Girl. <laughs> Look, look. No, really, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's the one scene where she's getting possessed. Look, yeah. <laughs> I'm back, that's the back. <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't watch that. Did you watch that? Yeah, it's like, dope. bro, I'm telling you, this is one of the best horror movies yeah. ever made. I'd see, I just seen this one. This one was the, the meme that I, I've seen so much of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yo, I literally look like that's the scary, bro. Damn, fuck. <laughs> scary. Do you think, do you think if you, um, Let's say you dress up mm. as something like a spirit or uh, trying to mock something that's real. Yeah. You'll get bad energy from the thing that you're trying to mock. The fuck? So like if you dress up as like uh, Michael Jackson, like, like no, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, no, no, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, no, Michael Jackson, 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 Michael you try, to, you try to do that lean, you fucking follow. Me. I don't think Michael Jackson's gonna haunt you though. I don't know what Michael Jackson. <laughs> I thought that's where you're going. No. Because how do you dress up as a ghost? You can't. No, you can dress up as people that could, uh, I guess, would haunt you. Yeah. Because Michael Jackson, like, what are you gonna be sleeping here? No, but I'm saying if you dress up as um, <laughs> let's say someone a bit more evil. Yeah. Let's say like like Jeff Jeffrey Dahmer or some shit. Oh, that's kind of same thing as Michael Jackson though. No, it's just p dead people. We're talking about dead people. Yeah, but Michael Jackson's not no, I mean debatable. Yeah, but I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Some people said he he did he did he do it? Yeah. Did he do <laughs> <laughs> what are you getting at though? <laughs> no, but um. What's it called? Jeffrey Dahmer, for example. Uh -huh. Oh, I was gonna say there's there's this person that collects items of different serial killers. And oh hell no! Yeah, this guy has Jeffrey Dahmer's glasses. Oh shit! And he has his has them in his crib. I think there's didn't there's a few didn't different... they sell it? They sell yeah, and that's the guy that bought it. Mm. Oh he yeah, bought it. so this guy bought it, and he said when he had it in his room, yeah, it would almost it would it would have an energy to it. Mm -hmm. It almost called to him type of thing like Ew. it would give him thoughts and you know like ideas in his head but is it because of the energy that's attached to the glasses or is it because of i guess the the story that comes with it you know i think it is the story that comes with it do you know the the have you ever played the simon game like oh, you, with you the know, pencils and shit? no 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 not, not that it's it's a circle right and then it's red yellow blue green and the nah, whole point of the game is like uh it'll beep out red yellow green and then you're gonna have to start pressing it so it's a memorization game yeah right so i don't know if you know the story but there was a group of teenagers at a house party mm -hmm. and they went up to a little girl's room and they found that simon toy right yeah and they started playing with it and uh they noticed that the simon toy it's just memorization game it started malfunctioning mm -hmm. so they're like okay is it this kind of weird but then right after they started asking each other questions and the Simon toy would react to the questions. It would it would speak? No, it would it would light up either green or red. Oh, so, so it's it's saying yes yeah. or no. <laughs> it's like a Ouija On board. Ouija board shit. So the guy would would be like, test it. He's like, uh, Simon, is my shirt black? It would lag out for a bit. Beep, green. Oh, he was wearing fuck. a black shirt. <laughs> I, so that that's I, I, that's like a isn't it a little tyke's toy? Yeah, it, it's a little tyke's toy. But that's the thing. It's like, uh, is it? This is why why it gets weird. The girl that the 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 room that they were in yeah. had a drawing on her like um her, her desk mm -hmm. and they got it and they put it next to the Simon toy and the drawing is the little girl with like a black figure that she draws. Oh I'll, shit! I'll show you. So so she sees the person that's on the other yeah. side of it. So that's why it might not be even be the Simon toy. It's the it's the environment around it. Look. Oh, that's weird. And look bro. look look at the numbers. No. Yeah. That's fucking weird. So this is what happens. They test it again. They're like, oh, am I a girl or a boy? And it doesn't respond because it only responds to no or yes. Yeah. Right? And then they say, uh, the last question, are you... And then right before here, they hear a knocking on the window. They look at the window, fam. Nothing's there. Oh my God. They run out of the house, buddy, fam. Fuck. It's fucked. If, I think that's the scariest thing as a parent. Like, yeah. imagine your kid oh, yeah. starts to see something in the crib, mm -hmm. but they're connected to it. Yeah. Kind of thing. Because when, when it's children, they don't know any better. And they're... That's why parents always say, like, don't talk to strangers. Mm -hmm. Because they can be led down a path that obviously they don't know what's wrong or right that ass yeah and there's stories before of like kids yo mm. there's this one story i heard on reddit yeah and this is this is a popular one okay okay but the kid 
would have an imaginary friend yeah. that would tell her to do, I guess, just like, what do you call it? What's the word? Misbehave. Oh, like bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she would blame it on the imaginary friend. But okay. that's like a kid thing to do, right? <laughs> yeah. But the reason the mom got really scared yeah. was because she would see the kid and hang out with the kid in one room the whole time. Uh -huh. And when they go to another room, there would be like a mess on the floor. And she would blame it on and the... And she would blame it on the imaginary friend. Okay. So they're thinking like, okay, maybe the kid just snuck in there and did some stuff, right? Yeah, so the yeah. mom tested it. They were watching a movie together in the living room. They I, they were probably watching like, I think, Finding Nemo or whatever. Yeah. And they were just chilling. They were just chilling. And they hear something in the other room. Mm -hmm. So they walk over and then they see like on the wall, just crayon, like, drawn all over the wall and the kid blames the but, ghost again and then the kid goes she, the, no the mom asked the kid like did you do this yeah yeah and he goes no it was it was the kid my was imaginary, imaginary friend, friend. <laughs> it was imaginary friend yeah yeah so at that point when you're a parent like how do you know when to i guess to say okay something else is going on or you just mm. think it's your kid because there's obviously bad behavior too some yeah. kids would just be just be delusional and say oh Oh, it wasn't me. You know what no, I'm saying? If, if There's some kid... kids like that though. There's some kids that would that would they would lie their ass off. Yeah, yeah. But that's smart that's not though. Me. Yeah, that's super smart. Like a, a super malicious kid would make that lie of, oh, it's just my my fucking a bad kid would say that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But we we never know. Yeah, no. I think if I were to ever see like a child do something out of the ordinary, I would just try and talk to them. Yeah. Because even though kids, here's the problem. I feel like we talk to kids to baby. Like, we don't respect what they're saying too much? No, not that. But you know how when when you see a young, young kid? Yeah. And this is why I'm not good with babies. Okay. is because I'll talk to them like a like a regular person. Oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. I know, but why not? <laughs> because they only know, like, okay, say a real baby. The Goo Goo Gaga. You have to communicate with them with, ah, with sounds. Yeah, but but that's the problem. Like, why do we do that? <laughs> I don't know. You either. get me, though? Like, why can't we talk to babies normal? Why can't I talk to, like, oh, how's the weather? <laughs> no, Honestly, I'm not going to get an answer, feel me? I'm not going to get an answer, but at least, like, I'm, I'm treating them normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that he'll grow up. You know, maybe more mature. Yeah, yeah. There, there was an instance when I went to uh, the church and the the music was playing and like the whole church was going crazy. Everyone mm. was singing and they kept crying. No, no. And there was an um, I think he's um, it was it's like acoustic. He was an acoustic kid. Yeah. And um, it was crazy because as soon as uh, the drum started playing and stuff, all you can see he he left his mom mm -hmm. and he started bouncing. Right. He got one of the tambourines on the wall. And he started going like this, but it was on beat, like super on beat. And yeah. I was like, oh shit, like, did the Holy Spirit just get into him? <laughs> like, like, no, he was bro, like, kids that have autism and kids yeah. on the spectrum, some of them are very, very smart. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, you, you may seem that they have a, you know, who, uh -huh. who knows, like a, like a disability or a condition. Yeah, yeah. But they're at, some of them are, are geniuses mm. because their brain doesn't work in one way. It oh, works it, amazing in the other way. Yeah, because uh, that, mind you, that kid is super small still. Like, mm -hmm. and he's already doing that. So, like, yeah, that is kind of crazy. There's a theory that, um, like, Adolf, I, I, oh, I'm yeah, not yeah. gonna say the, you know, yeah, yeah. he had, he's on the spectrum. Word. Yeah, there's theories about that. There's theories that there's very, very famous um, people that did crazy things in their time. Yeah. And it lines up to conditions they would have had. Which makes sense, feel me? Yeah. Like, I think uh, Napoleon, Napoleon had bipolar. Yeah. But it makes sense. If you think about it, the way he was acting and the way he was forcing people to do shit, mm. and it lines up. Yeah. But people with those minds, you go ahead. But back in the day in history, yeah. that shit wasn't a thing. Mm. You, know, you know what I mean? It was normal? Yeah. No, they, they didn't have words for it. <clears throat> yeah. They didn't know what that was. It, it's just like, oh, he acts like that. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. They didn't, they didn't classify it as some shit. So that girl in the ghost story, I mean, that person, that little kid in the ghost story, she didn't have any disability or whatever, or she was normal. And she started seeing things. Oh, the imaginary kid one? Yeah. No, that's just a child, fam. Oh, okay. That's just a child. You know what uh what was crazy? Uh you know the the hanging man? Remember that that video that went super viral of me talking about the hanging man? Nah. Uh, it was it was like nine months ago and how the kid would draw and show his dad. Nah, uh, I actually don't remember what he was seeing because he was saying imaginary friend. Yeah. Fam, yesterday, that dad, 
that dad messaged me and took down our video. Oh, really? Yeah. B- and I was like, bro, it's nine months ago. Like, thing. Like, what? But Loki, we should have had him on the podcast to really explain the story. Wait, why? So because we got views off it, so he he was mad that. Uh... So he took down the shorts. He he re- got, got like the thing reported. He was like, yo, copyright them. <laughs> you know what though? If if you put it out online for other people, I feel yeah, like it's free game. At that point, it's kind of free game. Yeah, but I guess it's a, the thing is like I'm telling your story and I'm getting more views than you did, so it's like. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe that's what it yeah. is. Right? Did, did you uh, see that guy also on uh, Joe Rogan? Uh, mm-hmm. Cow, I think it's fuck. It's Python Cowboy. Python Cowboy. Oh yeah, the the rapper, right? No, no, no. he's the he's the guy. Oh, talking, I think it was someone else. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I think about somebody else. My no. bad, my bad, my bad. So bad. there was a guy on Joe Rogan. Like he was, a, he's a snake like YouTuber. Like his content is like, I deal with snakes. I go on the Everglades. Like reptiles. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So he was telling a story and. He went to the the Everglades, the Florida Everglades, for an adventure, mm-hmm. and then he stumbled across like a pile of rocks, and then he was he was looking at it and he was like, "Oh, there's inverted crosses on these rocks, oh, right?" What? Like- and yeah. He was just trying to search for snakes. That's all he was doing. What do you mean cro- inverted crosses? So what do you mean on a that? red marker on some rocks, there yeah. would be crosses. Oh shit! Yeah, and he looked more into it, and he saw a doll. Yeah, with also an inverted cross on its forehead. What the so fuck? he's like, "What the fuck?" And there were in the crevice, there was a snake. Mm-hmm. And when he picked up the snake and he took it in his hands, he said that it was uh, bleeding out of his ass. And and he's a snake guy, right? Yeah. Snakes, he says, usually don't do this. Mm-hmm. So already the area, he's like, "This is kind of weird, right?" He keeps exploring, and on the cement, when he walks a bit further, there's something in Latin. What does it say? It says. Uh, turn around now. He is watching you. What the fuck? And this guy's like, what the fuck? I'm just here for snakes. So he, he ignores all the signs yeah. and starts exploring the buildings. In the building, fam, this is crazy. He walks inside the building, flashes his flashlight on the wall, and there's a like a spray painting. Mm-hmm. And it's him. No, him? With like, a snake. Wait. And it says, uh, Python season. What the fuck? Yeah. So they knew he was going to go there? I don't know. And this, this is where the story gets crazier. Before he leaves, he thinks that something touched him. And when he looks on the ground in the video, there's a, a baby on the ground. Yeah. He's like, is this the same baby from before? And the, he, he dips. But this is the crazy fact, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, after he finds out this. So there's a guy that uh, is named Jack Parsons who conjured his own wife from hell in that area. And his oh, wife's name shit. was Majorgi Kimmel. And? The same name as Kimmel's, uh, as Python Cowboy's grandmother. Wait, what the fuck? So it's like, it's like uh, it all led up to there. It's like he knew. That's not his grandmother. It's just the same name. Yeah, same name though. Well, that's weird. Yeah. But th- it makes sense though, because what if that was, since he conjured that person from Thing and it was his grandmother, maybe he was cursed to start. What, what I'm thinking about is is there is there something that happens with the name that gives like a spiritual significance? That's the reason they use him for the ritual. Mm. Would they need someone attached to that person? That's like because you you know how in demon or not not demon Slayer, Slayer. sorry um Chainsaw Man yeah and I told you that thing where um she would go up to these prisoners yeah, they would yeah. say say this name and oh. and the person would die but the person like across the world with yeah. the same name would die oh yeah so do you think there's spiritual significance to a name that if somebody's attached to it somehow and you can like get in that way or i don't know because ancestors do you know your ancestors it's by blood right exactly yeah if we're connected we're connected by family and there, there's definitely some spiritual significance that we can't see within our family yeah we're connected some way the, the thing I always think about is, okay, what if I'm I'm out in public yeah. and I meet somebody that maybe I don't know personally and my family doesn't know personally, but somewhere down the line through like an ancestry uh-huh. and their ancestry, somebody, somebody we- yeah, somebody was, was friends with, with each mm. other or they knew each other in some way. Have you, have you gone through that yet or no? 
No, nah, that's impossible. Like, how am I supposed to know that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe maybe your mom was like, oh, yeah, that person that you did meet was my thing. Like, you ever get those? I've gotten those. No, but I'm, what I'm thinking about oh, is... Oh, like a random person. I, I'm talking about, like, Neanderthal <laughs> era, feel <laughs> okay, me? Like, okay. like, bro gave bro another rock. <laughs> and then, like, oh, yo, we're homies now. We're homies, yeah. And then yeah. in the future, <laughs> like, the, the great, 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 great grandkids <laughs> or great, 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 great cousins yeah, were yeah. are, like, friends and some shit. I, I, believe, I believe the name thing rather than the dressing up as a dead person, you know what I mean? That that it's more likely with the name. The the reason I say the dressing up, <laughs> the the dressing up part, yeah, is because there's a lot of people that do blasphemy and things, uh-huh. and then they always get cursed. Word, cursed. There's a there's many times that's happened. For example, the Brazil one. Oh oh, you're talking like that? Okay. I, I'm talking about you replicate something with a negative connotation around it mm-hmm. and then your life is in shambles because you did that true because i think that could happen yeah i remember uh i saw this interview uh-huh. it was with it was with kanye's friend yo you know um you know kanye's actually he's actually a, a gang member the whole time he's been, he's, secret, he's secretly been a like gang a member Black crip or like no a gd part- oh kanye west has secretly been a gang member this whole time. Really? Yeah. I mean, he did live in Chirac, so like, it makes sense. Now, I was watching this interview, and this is homie. His GD homie, actually. Yeah. And Kanye said before in his Genius documentary that his friends would never let him do the initiations. But he would always be affiliated regardless, right? Okay. I think the reason that is, though, is because they saw the potential in him so that he doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, go down the wrong path. He yeah, doesn't, yeah, like, yeah. get caught up in, in bullshit because he has a lot of potential. True. He's going to make it... He's gonna make it famous. In the genius documentary, if you look closely, he actually throws up the rakes. Like oh yeah? The the gang sign. Wait, yeah. genius in like explaining lyrics or or like a Bro, ge- random. The Kanye Genius documentary. Oh his documentary. Oh shit. He actually throws up the rakes, like the GD <laughs> symbol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you look closely in it. Now, um, the guy, what he was saying was uh Kanye the whole time, he felt like he wasn't meant to, I guess, it's not that he wasn't meant to, but he felt that he had to prove himself within the gang because all the other people were hard. You know what I mean? They're, mm-hmm. they're doing and he that was shit. like wearing polos and like. Yeah. So, yeah. but that was actually on purpose. They just never told him. It, so, it was like, do you remember that thing I said the other day about uh-huh. somebody might be in your life yeah. that holds cards but that you don't realize matter to you mm. so they put you in a position that you think was for one reason yeah. but the whole reason was a secret the whole time mm. is to protect them so he didn't end up in the gang that's why he didn't I, end oh. up in the gang and um what's crazy is if you think about it i was watching this kanye acknowledges it too that he's he's what he wanted to come out of that gang or like that's what Larry Hoover wanted to get out of mm-hmm. the Gangster Disciples yeah. is someone that famous or someone to that stature True. to be that successful. No, that's W though, because in the moment, you wouldn't really notice it, right? Mm-hmm. So that that guy that wanted to protect him yeah, and, and you seen Kanye like uh, go up and your gang not, mm-hmm. w- would you not be jealous? Or is like, did Kanye take care of them? Mm. Do you, do you, did Kanye take care of them or not? Or he, because he obviously doesn't rep it no more. He he definitely he takes care of his boys. Yeah. I know that. But that's such like a that's a crazy thing. Because like if that happened to me, I would be like, oh, I would probably help them if they if I knew. Mm. But if I didn't know, yeah, I would feel bad. He does know, but yeah. it, I I think it I think it's a thing of because he they treated him one way. Yeah, he has to react in that way, but realizing the truth later. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's hella so, like... For example, let's say let's say your um, your parent kept you away from your other parent yeah, and never told you the reason why. Mm-hmm. And they came to you and said, oh, because of this environment that they're in, yeah. it could be dangerous to your life. But you just never knew that. You just thought your your other parent was was a dick, mm-hmm. you know? But that guy that guy did good because he, he didn't mess up his timeline. Like, he kept it, like, straight. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah. Without and, him, there would be no thing. And that's rare because I feel a lot of homies. Yes. If they see you going one way, they'll do the opposite. They'll try to hold you with them yeah. rather than push you away. That's why the ending of um, what's that movie called? You ever watch Goodwill Hunting? No, no, no. I heard of it though. I've heard with, of it. with Matt Damon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's this one <laughs> scene, and it's with Ben Affleck, and Ben Affleck tells 
uh, Will, yo, the the biggest excitement I get isn't from us hanging out and shit. It's actually from before I go to your door. And I think to myself, man, maybe he's not home today. Why? Hopefully, hopefully he's not home. Maybe, maybe he left and he just didn't say goodbye. Maybe he's on to better things than just what we're going to be doing out here. Oh, that's what you're excited about. That's deep in there's it, so though. much, there's so much potential in <laughs> yeah. him. No, but that's like from a perspective of somebody that wants better for your homie. Yeah. Cause all they do is just do bullshit, drink alcohol and get in fights. Yeah. And then they end up working construction. And then that one day that the homie finally grows up, it's like, it's kind of sad day. It was like, he wants ha- him to grow. To yeah. He it. wants him to get out of there because yeah. Will in the movie is really, really smart. We didn't, that he doesn't, he doesn't, yeah. you know, he doesn't really take it as advantage. Yeah, that ass. But that's what I'm saying is like, if you have somebody in your circle that can do really, really well, you shouldn't ever hold them back. Yeah. That's why it's such a big thing for the Kanye Virgil. Drake even dissed about it. Yeah. That Kanye knew Virgil's success or his uh, potential the whole time, but he never, he never let him flourish yeah. until Virgil left. It was crazy, bro. And then now. Now Pharrell's taking over, but it's like it's not the same. Pharrell's taking over what? Louis Vuitton and for Virgil, but they're they're all all they're saying is it's not the same because it doesn't hit like the story when remember that that thing was like flew to Paris for a hug. Wait, what? Louis what is Paris. that? You don't know that? Nah. So when uh, Virgil finally did his first runway with yeah. Louis Vuitton, big with, with the Rainbow Road. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't remember that? And then he went up to Kanye and and Kanye that was the first time like I seen him like he was pulling down his hat because Benz did he didn't want to see Benz to cry. Oh yeah, he was crying. And then, yeah, and then yeah, Kanye yeah. has like a. A bar in the song was like flew to Paris for a, he flew all the way because that was his mentor. Like mm-hmm. he he uh, built the way for him to do that, and it finally worked out. Mm. It's crazy. You know what's crazy? I yeah. feel I feel like if that was painted, that moment of yeah. him crying and then Virgil giving a hug, that would be considered some really really fine fucking art. Yeah. But it lives in this reality as a what a iPhone video. Mm-hmm. So check this out. Do you think eventually we're gonna have museums? Of iPhone vids. What? The reason I think about think about why I say that is because if you bag it in art museums right now, they're just moments in time that were painted. Okay. Wait, so <laughs> that makes no sense. Wait, so would it be VR and we would just look through on no, our No, I'm saying would we want <laughs> to go to like galleries and just see the video Bro, as for what it is? Probably not. Yo, modern art museums right now, I swear are getting less and less attractive. You know why? why? Because why? it's like, there's this trend going around too where it's like, stand in front of the art that you think that you can make. And one of the girls <laughs> stood in front of it, I swear it's just white. It's a white picture. And I'm like, why is that in a museum, right? And then there's another one. It's a fan and yeah. a blanket. And the, the fan is just blowing the blanket up in the air. <laughs> I'm like, bro, anyone could do that. So it's like... Yeah, well, what is really art nowadays? Art is anything, though. Yeah, I know, but it's like... <laughs> There's no such thing as good art. Yeah. I don't think you can you can consider something good art. Art is just art. Uh, No, nah, there is good art. Like, like what? To the, to the public eye. Like, oh, if if one person says it's good, I feel like it's good. You know what I mean? But why? I don't know, because it, it, it hit whatever emotion or, like, thing that they were trying to get out of it. So. But what if the goal was to make some someone disgusted by it? And it made a person feel disgusted? Yeah. Yeah, then it worked. That's good art. Exactly. Yeah. So you said by someone, there's at least one person that liked it. Uh But what if the goal was to make someone disgusted? So that's the opposite of like. Mm. Is it still good art? Yeah, it's good art because they got that emotion out of it. Yeah, maybe. What if the emotion out of... So what if my art was to make you infuriated that it's stupid? Yeah. Is that now considered good art because I made you infuriated that it's stupid? Mm. Probably. Right? Low key. Because I think what we think is art is... um, paint um what looks like an artist right yeah, yeah. but realistically i can just go sit in a bench and that's my art because that's what i consider is me yeah you know that, I mean? that goes with a uh, comedy too like say uh, a person tells a joke but a person is disgusted with it mm-hmm. loki that's still a good joke because it, it triggered something that's yeah you know that's what, what i'm mean? saying yeah okay but, I but it it's it, but it's not um because we we try to we try to like mix entertainment and art <laughs> but sometimes it's just fucking art and we won't understand that shit period you know what i mean there was one uh there was one movie i watched recently okay this was really interesting because it's one of those movies where it's it's a decent movie until the end. And then the ending just like... It messes it up. Nah, it makes it... It makes it really... It makes it good. But it makes it good in a weird way. Okay. So this is the way movie? I can explain it. So the beginning of the movie, there's this guy. And he's 
a voice recorder or like a Foley sound engineer. Okay, okay. So pretty much what he has to do, he has to go and get live footage recording sounds mm -hmm. of a car, gunshots, whatever it may be, right? Now, he's at the park. Oh, actually, before that, sorry. Uh -huh. he, he sees his boss and they're working on this one film. It's a horror film. Yeah. And this woman, she's in the shower and a killer with a knife comes up okay. and tries to stab her. The woman screams, but the scream sounds stupid as fuck. It goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right? Now, the boss says, okay, fuck, we got to get a new, we got to get a new scream. Like, who, who are we going to get in the scream? Yeah. Like, oh, I'll look, I'll look around. I'll ask some people, right? Anyways, the guy says, hey, you know what? Even the wind noises in that, in that scene, like, we need some new ones. Yeah. So he sends them out to go get some wind noises. Okay. So bro's at the park with his recorder. He's getting the wind noises. He sees some people walking by. He gets like chatter of them. He sees a bird. He gets the chirping of the bird. And then he sees a car driving and speeding down the road. Now, when he sees the car speeding, it's coming close to the edge of a bridge. And yeah. all of a sudden, he hears a poof, like a big gunshot and the tire explodes. Oh, shit. So he captures this whole thing on tape. On this on this recording mm -hmm. and what he has to do he obviously like jumps in saves the woman in the car but he notices there's somebody else in the car too it's a man but he wasn't able to save that man he, he already looks like he's dead okay okay so he saves the woman and takes her to the hospital now this is where it gets interesting since he has the recording he sent it to the police yeah and he sent it to like a news place uh -huh. to crack down on what was the gunshot because there's obviously something more foul at play it turns out the person in the car was the next person to be a candidate as the president. What? Yeah, so he was the one that's going to be the president next. Oh, shit. So that whole thing that he recorded was actually an assassination. Wait, then who did it? Just a sniper shooting the car down? Now check this out. Yeah. So <clears throat> when he sent to the, to the police station mm -hmm. the recording, they got back to him and they called him and said, yo, this recording is blank. Like, there's nothing on here. Oh, and he goes to the news place and he talks to the news place like, yo, the recording's blank. Like, you, you have nothing. And he's freaking out like, what the fuck? What is he talking about? Yeah. So he goes to his office where he has all of the recordings, all of the literally years worth, years worth of different sounds that he collected. He goes to the, the office. Every single one of the tapes is gone. It's, it's just it's deleted. They're just blank. They're all <laughs> blank. Of, like, not even of the car. Yeah. It's just random. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the whole movie's kind of just this not not mundane but it's just like regular i pace. guess regular pace of shit going on right until the end and that's when that's when it makes it like a good movie because the whole movie is just whatever like oh there's a problem yeah, you know yeah, yeah. there's a mystery but the ending is what makes it fam <laughs> what's the ending so there's a there's another news reporter that contacts the woman that he saved and behind the scenes the news reporter is actually the assassin that shot out the tire of the car coming. Mm -hmm. Now, the guy said, okay, you know what? The last time I gave the footage and the recording to the news people, it came out blank. He has a backup saved and he gave it to the woman because the woman's supposed to meet up with a news person. Yeah. Now, the news person calls her and is like, okay, let's meet up at this place this time, blah, blah, blah. Now, they meet up. But this time when they meet up, the sound recorder guy, he put a wire on her. Oh. And he said, okay, he seems sus, but let's just go with it. If you need help, just call me. Yeah. They meet up at, I think, like, Grand Central Station, whatever. And he talks to the woman. And right away, the guy can tell, like, wait, that's not the same voice as the person. This is a whole different guy. That's not the same news reporter. So that's they switch the thing. mics? No, that's that's the assassin, and he can tell oh. he can tell the woman's about to die. Oh shit! Because the assassin's gonna kill her. So he talk he overhears them talking about oh it's the fourth of July and they're gonna do fireworks at this one place yeah. at this one place and he knows like oh in his head I know exactly where they're gonna go. It's like this secluded area with fireworks. Mm -hmm. Now the guy takes the woman up there. The assassin takes the woman up there. Yeah, and since there's so much fireworks. You can't, can't even hear, hear he can't even hear what's going oh. on, right? It's, it's just too much. So he's running and running and running and, f and trying to, his best to get to her because he knows the guy's going to try and kill her. He gets up there. He sees the woman 
stabbed to death already. God, he sees the assassin. He grabs the knife, kills the assassin. Damn. And that was the end of it. You just saw like the girl dead, right? Now the end of the movie, he goes back to his boss and he goes, all right, let's work on the scene. <laughs> they play the scene. Yeah. And he goes, he's watching the girl about to get stabbed in the knife. Boom. And the girl scream. Like no it's way. the it's the most perfect scream ever, Yo. and the guy and the guy goes. So what do you think about the scream? Yo, that's dark. And then the guy's like, "That's dark. That's the best scream I ever <laughs> heard in my life. Like, how would you get that scream, right?" <laughs> and and he goes, "Yeah, it's it's a good scream." And he's like holding his ears, like Holy hearing the scream. Holy like, shit! Oh. Yeah, because that's in footage, like in real life, so in feel. He got the scream. <laughs> But it was from a real Yo, fucking murder. That's crazy. Is that a short film or an actual film? This is a film. Yeah, this this is um Andrew De Palma's blowout. Okay, yeah, that yeah. has a, that's not an indie film, right? No, that's a real film. Yeah, that, that's such an indie plot though. Like, yeah, <laughs> like I that know. ending. That ending, I would be like. Yo, that's just dark. Because I was, yeah, I know. I was watching <laughs> this movie. I'm like, okay, it, it seems like a regular action movie. Some shit's gonna pop yeah. off, and he's gonna save the day, right? And I saw the ending. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. Bro took the girl's scream yeah. and used it in the movie. So when people watch the movie, that's somebody getting murdered in real life. Wait, wait it's based on a true story or no? Or is it like nah, part of the nah, thing? Nah. Okay, but it's still fucked though. But, but if you take it in, that could be a real thing. That could easily be a real thing. Like if we go and watch a movie, a lot of that stuff is, is yeah. real recordings and stuff. The Foley's especially. Yeah. You don't know. So what if in some movies, maybe even back in the day, they just use straight up footage or not even oh. footage, like sound footage, people actually getting murked. Yeah. Remember in the, I fucking forgot what J. Cole song was it, but the screams in the back were actually kids. That was the, the jo Jonestown Massacre, right? Yeah, Jonestown right? Massacre. And it's stuff like that because in other films, they'd go on the dark web and it's like, you know, the MP3 players back then we you could buy sounds. Mm -hmm. Oh, boom. If you want fucking... Uh, uh, six-year-old kid screaming. You can buy shit like that off of the dark web. Oh, what? The yeah, fuck? there's like CDs. Like that. That's what they call like the the D word tapes. You know what I mean? The what tapes? The devil tapes. But oh, it's like, yeah, really? In the, yeah, in in the dark web, and you purchase these, and a lot of musicians put it, and the the ones that use the, those tapes mm. usually are the ones that get boosted up. Cause I I get that because like if you think about it, if you want a specific sound, you have to go get it, or you have to somehow replicate it. So if That's you want a sound of some horrific shit going on in your yeah. horror movie, you might just have to oh, do some man. horrific shit to get that sound, right? Yeah. There was there was another one that I see on TikTok. It was very like indie, very niche. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's the whole point of it was like um they they were trying to replicate a real life scenario mm -hmm. where uh oh, fuck I forgot it's like something it starts with a P and it's it was shot in New York. It was like Fallahassee or something, mm -hmm. the Fal Fallahassee murder or something. And the girl was actually put on, like, there was a, a scene where uh, they were in a bedroom. And the girl was actually put on a scene where it's, like, she's just hanging and stuff. And it got so serious that there was, like, shit that was crawling behind her and stuff. Because they were trying to replicate that dead person's story. So, it, wait, was this was this a real person? Uh, I think so. I think it was. But the person didn't die. No, the person didn't die. But, like, the stuff happening around it was real. Oh, shit. Like, the, the ghosts, like, started fucking, like, yo, don't tell my story in this way. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're, we're about to mess up the set. That's that's kind of like the Wizard of Oz hanging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, how there's a there's a hanging person in the Wizard of Oz. I've seen that. I've it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I heard a lot of the times when stuff happens on set like that. Yeah. Since they don't have any other footage, they just have to use like what they took. Because if you bag it as a film, like a filmmaker, yeah, damn, you have what you took. And if you don't notice it in the background, it's going in, bro. <laughs> no, I always wondered like those people riding the the TTC while you're shooting the the scenes there. Do they know that they're in a Spider Man movie? They don't know. Like, you know, you don't. They know. have no idea. Yeah, like, like, the, one sick. day they'll find themselves like, yeah, oh well, shit, that's, that's me. <laughs> like their cousin might connect them. Like, yo, there's this YouTuber. Oh, you were in it. You know what I mean? That's crazy that's though. Sick, that's that's, that's interesting. There, there was another one. Uh. Uh, in Donald Duck, you know yeah. that the the show where it's like um, there there was a uh, three kids of Donald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. um the nephews. Yeah. What's his, what are their names? Again? I forgot. <laughs> no, I I know it. I know it. Huey, Louie, and Dewey. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huey, Louie, and Dewey. So there was a scene where they had they were in um an eye doctor's office, mm -hmm. and the whole scene was just like the eye doctor's telling, them, oh you we have to test your eyesight and stuff like that. But there's a hidden detail that a lot of men's that didn't catch it when we were growing up. So in the back, you know that paper that they stick on the wall and then you have to say, 
uh, the the letters and it gets smaller and smaller. Yeah, yeah. So it's like A B C D, right? So it's spelt out. Ask about Illuminati. What on the back? Wow. So the whole scene where it's it's just staring at the film while while the guy is just like talking. Yeah, it's in the back. It says that in, yeah in the wording in the wording perfectly A S K about and they read it out or it was just no no it was just there. Oh, but remember that thing that you showed me where it was another like kids show and they they put up the the letters. It was Illuminati. That thing you sent me. It was like a Christmas movie or something. Oh, the it was the Santa Claus movie. Yeah, stuff like that. It's like it's when the they Santa ha- Claus movie instead of in. Instead of it saying like we love Santa, yeah. it says we love Santa. That's what I'm saying. It, it's it's simple stuff like that that mans don't realize. Have you heard that? Um there's this urban legend in Mexico. Yeah. Have we talked about this? I don't Which I don't one? know if we ever talked about this. We don't I we don't talk a lot about Mexico because I don't know. We stick on the 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 Filipino and Chinese and the Japanese because I feel like we don't know you, a lot. You there. told a you told a similar story, I think. You told a story about a girl. Like praying for the devil, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's another story I heard. Uh-huh. This, this is a very, very popular urban legend in Mexico. Okay. But it's about the girl that danced with the devil. Have you heard of this? Did we did we t- talk about this? Was it in the club? Yeah. Did you talk about this? I think so. And it had no legs. Yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, okay. Yeah yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I think I did. That, yeah. that show was crazy. That show was crazy. But there was a. I didn't know this too. Since we're on Mexicans, mm. you know Rey Mysterio. Mm-hmm. There was a big incident with him that happened like uh, way back then, early in his wrestling career. Yeah. Did you know about this? No. What happened? You, so there was a there was a him and another famous like high flyer Mexican wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. And they were planning to do a big match. So it was like USA versus Mexico. Yeah. And in this, you know, like how wrestling is scripted and stuff, mm-hmm. and how. At the the end of every wrestling match, there's a guy that does a signature move, right? So Ray, the whole match was going fine until the end because it went off script. What so happened? the the Mexican uh, wrestler, he was supposed to be uh, in line for six one nine. Yeah. But when Ray Mysterio did like this weird move, he got sent over the ropes mm-hmm. and he he hit his back on like the edge of the ring. Yeah. Right. So he was like, okay, I I gotta get back into the ring. Like this is not how the the match ends. He goes back in the ring. Rey Mysterio drop kicks him, but he drop kicks him in the same spot that he just got hit in. Mm-hmm. And so he's hanging on the ropes like this. And everybody's like, oh yeah, go for the 619. Ray does the 619. The guy, you know how like usually after like the guy falls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still there like this. Oh, he broke his back. Fam. No, th- it's crazier. So uh Ray was like, oh, what's going on? T- the, the Ray told the ref, "Yo, tell him wake up, wake up." Yeah, he's unconscious, fam. Uh, the ref calls the match. Five minutes later, he dies on live TV. Oh shit! Yeah, he was a I famous didn't... uh Mexican wrestler, and Ray got so much backlash because of it. He was like, "Wait, when was this?" I don't know. It was old though. It was really old. This, this is like Ray Mysterio, Ray Mysterio, the one Ray that Mysterio. Still yes, see. bro. Oh, yeah, I didn't know about that. So they had the whole murder like. On Online, tape. like right now. Yeah, yeah. Can you show? Can I see it? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Nah, there's no videos. There's no videos of it. No, it, no it, there's a video, but it's like, like I would have to show it on YouTube. I'll, I'll show you it later. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was fucked. Damn, bro. <laughs> imagine, imagine you're like actually doing something. Let's say you know how in live TV. Yeah. So a lot of you guys see the final product in these podcasts that we post, but there are so much steps behind the scenes that me and Carlos take to produce just one episode. From doing all the research beforehand to planning time in our day to record and then editing the hour podcast and uploading the final drafts to YouTube, I promise you it's not easy as you think. So for all you guys who run an e-commerce business, you guys can probably relate to the amount of work it takes to produce something so great. And like us, we want to optimize your workflow and reduce costs. And ShipStation is the multi-carrier shipping solution that integrates wherever you sell online. So when you optimize your shipping process and connect to a network of expert partners, you reclaim valuable time for what truly matters, growing your own business. So me and Carlos both have our personal brands and I recommend ShipStation because of how easy it is to automate shipping tasks and manage orders in one simple dashboard. And with the industry leading carrier discounts, we both save so much money on shipping costs. So the easy to use dashboard makes managing orders, smooth label printing, reporting, and customer service easy. Effortlessly import orders from everywhere you sell online with shipping configurations automatically applied 
scale your business and reduce warehouse costs with ShipStation's reliable enterprise solutions. Save thousands on shipping costs with discounts up to 89% off UPS, DHL Express, and USPS rates. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So ShipStation is the innovative tool that helps turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. Go to ShipStation.com and use code JUMPERS, J-U-M-P-E-R-S, to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code JUMPERS. There's shit always just popping off in the background. <laughs> you know, like, when, when, when you're... When you're uh... When you're getting interviewed by by the the, t- the TV reporter, yeah, and then the, in the background, someone <laughs> just grabs the mic like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> "Yo, I always think about this though. Mm. What if you were to do that? Yeah, if your boss sees you doing some bullshit, are you just gonna get fired like on the spot? No, I don't know. There, there was funny. There was this uh, news reporter that was doing a, a live like uh, reporting. Yeah, and there was a bunch of guys around him just roasting him. So it was like, look at this guy, his fucking hairline receding, and he just. He just had to report the news. But Damn. The, so he's getting roasted <laughs> by just like a passerby. But you have to remain professional. I do like, uh, today's weather is... <laughs> the, the funniest shit is when I see my cousin get interviewed by like a news reporter. What happened? But he... It's like he turned into a different person. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how like you see people and then they, they call like... They t- converse with you at a certain, I guess like um, frequency. Like more professional. Yeah. It was more professional. They're chilling. <laughs> but... When he was on the the news, I'm like, wait, that's not even him. <laughs> it, it just felt like it's a whole different person. Because I think when cameras come out yes, and when, when the mics come out, and especially because it's the news, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to use this certain frequency where like, today, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? But if you see like in our news reporting or in our uh, interviews on GMA or like yeah. uh, Filipino TV. It was like that too. It was like that too. I didn't do that. No, okay. Not for you, but at the beginning, it hit me though. Because it's like, oh, fuck. I'm on news right now. So it's like, let me... And I was like talking about, oh yeah, Raph is about blah, blah, blah. And I don't talk like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think it was my seating position because I sat like this. Mm -hmm. And when you were like this, so like you're already in like... I'm just chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah This yeah. is a, ch- a chill talking like thing. I'm curious if we ever get a president or if we ever get like a prime minister that yeah. doesn't talk professionally, that talks like a human. See, I love I love the the that stuff about it. Like mm-hmm. when you're supposed to be in a in a um oh wow, how's how's the word professional like, professional setting. Yeah, but it, you do the opposite because that's what really stands you out. Like mm-hmm. remember, I made fun of Ethan for doing the the proper answers. Oh, if you like filmmaking, you can do it because blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But it's like a lot of people are not going to, you know what I mean, feel the emotion because it's not you. I think the reason that we don't remember those people as much yeah. that have too much of like, um, I guess, a corporate wording. Yes. Is because there's that's the standard of that setting. That, so yeah. it's not memorable. But I think the reason, for example, like Donald Trump is so memorable. I was just going to say Or that. like, um, for example, like there's certain rappers or artists all all of the people that sound different or you know are a little bit more vulgar yeah. just out of the norm those are the people that we remember more because they just don't get lost in the regular yeah like i always say like love him or hate him donald trump had one of the best like uh debates on tv what do you what because, do you do? because he like they would come at him with facts yeah and he would be like that's wrong. That's very wrong. Word. <laughs> that's it. But it's so funny because he doesn't say shit back. It's just, that's wrong. <laughs> He's in the wrong. I'm in the right. <laughs> I actually never watched any of those debates. I'm but like, it was so funny. Yeah, because it's just like a kid. You're trying to battle against a kid in a, in a political setting, fam. It's so jokes. I seen this one. Yeah. This was crazy. <laughs> this one was fucked. But it was um, it was Justin Trudeau. And who's the other guy? Pierre Pouvier or whatever? Yeah, I forgot his name, but it's Pierre. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not really into policy yeah, like that, but yeah, I just seen this one clip. And it was Pierre Pouvier, and, and he, was, he was on the mic. And he said, did you know this guy spent blah, 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 blah money on that? Also, did you know he sent a whole bunch of his friends a certain amount of million of dollars yeah. for a casino? To the person that wasted our money, please stand up. And then, what, since yeah. it was Justin Trudeau's turn to talk, he had to stand oh. up. <laughs> that's 
<laughs> Wait, did he did he purposely do that? Yeah, he knew oh, it was gonna happen. So Can the person that wasted our money please stand up? And then he has to stand up because it's his next. Like he yeah, he, he has to go next. No, right away. That's like that's uh, that would break my confidence, Sam. Fuck, I'm not even talking no more. Caught him. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you got caught, bro. Holy smoke. There's another one. Fuck. There was a funny one. Cause you know how you know how there's huge debates about the Ukraine thing, like sending money to Ukraine. Yeah. Now, I think this is in like U.S. politics. I don't know the names of the people. I just see the clips because it's kind of uh-huh. like funny. Yeah. But there's this guy, and he was talking. He was debating this woman that was saying like, "Oh, we gotta keep sending more money to Ukraine. All of this, this stuff, blah blah." blah. Yeah. And he goes, "All right, you know what? I bet you can't even name any of the provinces the wars that are happening in it." And he couldn't. And he said, "I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a chance. Go ahead, say one." No. And she couldn't even say shit. No, no. So if you bag that, he proved that, oh, you're trying to send money yeah. over there. You can't even name where the problems are happening. You're just trying to send the money just so you can get the vote or just so you can be oh, seen as that type crazy. of person. And that's what's fucked. Because a lot of the time, I think people just want to be seen as who who they think they are, mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. who they actually are. Yeah. So it's all just a sham at the end of the day. But I don't know. It's like, you know, those street interviews where it's like, or like the, they have the girls on the podcast, like name three cities. And yeah. like, you're kind of on the spot. So it's like, you, your mind's kind of rumbled and you forget. But but in that setting, it's different. No, that's different. Yeah, because, that's because different. you, you where actually Where the war know. is happening, yeah. that, come on, fam. Like, you can't name like <laughs> where the war is actually, like the positioning and shit. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. <laughs> I don't know if you know this too, but you know, uh, uh Donald Trump, like, presidential run mm-hmm. was already written in the books, like, in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a book about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know that shit. That was, shit was crazy. Would you, uh, do you, know, remember, you remember the name of the book? Uh, it was, um, it's like, it, it wasn't Donald Trump. It was Baron Trump's, like, adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. so. Something like that. And he's a time traveler. Yeah, exactly. That was, mm. shit was crazy. And, and the time traveler, what he did, the reason he got the time travel abilities, mm. he met up with somebody named Alon. Huh? Named Elon. And like, well, as in, as in, Elon. Oh. yeah, I think it was that. Or was it Tesla? It, I think because a part of the case, the reason why they were saying, oh, it was either coincidence or time travel. Yeah. It's because the same, when the author was writing the book, mm-hmm. Nikola Tesla was in New York doing the time travel stuff. Oh. Yeah. And there's a hidden detail. Uh, when the FBI raided uh, Nikola Tesla's building. Yeah. There were, the FBI got all his unfinished research. And, and the FBI was, was, Led by Donald Trump's like uncle. grandfather, yeah, uncle, yeah, yeah, something yeah. Like that. I think, yeah, it was like I forgot, yeah, but it was but, his uncle. But if that's true, <clears throat> wouldn't he already be like in power? I don't know, or wouldn't he already have everything done for him? Because yeah, because he's he already a millionaire. Travel. Oh, you thought that since they have money, they can they can no. Buy if you have the power to time travel, I feel like you would have everything. No, yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, because I watched this movie uh, about time. Mm-hmm. Have, have, have I told you about this one? About time, no. So he was able to manipulate his whole life. It's kind of sad, but yeah. it's kind of it's good. It's a great movie, but in my head, it's sad, and nobody else thinks it's sad, mm-hmm. like in this way. But what he did when he met the love of his life, yeah. what he would do, he would time travel back in time and replay the first meeting of her. Oh shit! So at first, he would fuck up. He's like, oh, blah, 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 I don't know what to say to you, blah blah. blah. And then you just go, okay, it's okay. I just go back in time yeah. and then speak a better game. And you would redo it, redo it, redo it. Until finally, he was able to, you know, get her interested, mm-hmm. bring her back home, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. they could live happily ever after. Yeah. But in my head, I'm thinking, Loki, the first way it went down was the way it's supposed to go. Exactly, yeah. It's, it creates a ripple. Like the, the movie I was talking about, mm-hmm. how they, they won the casino, but man's died after. You know mm. what I mean, I don't think as a time traveler, yeah, you would be you would be uh, excited to change shit, but you don't really. I think the I think it's more sad because he locked in that woman to that reality without her ever knowing. Yeah, that's you gotta go to if that woman finds out, that's gotta be like a you uh, illegal. Was, that can't that can't go down though. Like it's time travel, yeah. feel me? <laughs> but it, I, I don't know. Nobody thinks it's sad about that. I yeah. think it's sad because he he forced a woman to fall in love with him. That's true. You know, the, 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 it's like the Groundhog Day. Yeah. Like, that's what the, the this week has been feeling because we're just waking up, recording a podcast, waking up, recording a podcast. You know what I mean? So it's like, it feels like Groundhog Day. 
Oh, because it's yeah. always the same. Oh, and I feel like and until that's, I'm that's that's just a job, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, job. but I feel like I, when I just go back home and, and everything is gonna reset. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I don't know. I've just been in, in the work mode. I'm always in work yeah, mode. Yeah, but it's just it's yeah. That shit is just kind of just like a job. Do you not work though? No, half the time I'm chilling to be honest. Really? Yeah, because I'm just like because with with podcasting and with uh, uh running a brand yeah there's a lot that you can do but it doesn't take that much time you know what i mean you're waiting on manufacturers you're you there's a lot of wait time especially like if there's we, a lot to do fam yeah i know but i like i like balance so it's like i'm not going to overwork myself you know what i mean what do you think is overworking overworking is to the point where it's like shit i'm i'm st- i'm like not getting good sleep no more my health is deteriorating that's, that's but is it because of the actual input you're doing or is it because of the activities you're taking part in probably probably the activities it's a great question yeah it's a great question because um my homie and he's he's well off as a millionaire yeah, shout, yeah. shout out bro oh yeah but he told me this thing it was like yo you're always sleeping at that time and i get it but when you're sleeping at that time how much input or how much work did you actually get done compared to what are you using your time really for? Mm. And then he he put he put it into perspective. I'm like, you know what? That's a great question, or that's a great way to to think about it. Because even though I'm spending like less sleep, yeah, and the less sleep times two is a times two because when you wake up, you can't work as hard the next day. And he told me too was like, okay, imagine you took only only um two two hours off of your sleep, right? Mm-hmm. But in those two hours, you used it for leisure or used it for work. If you use it for leisure, wasting time. It's not just a waste of time, but you never really, you never really get it back, or you never really get it forward. True. You're all you're moving backward. Mm. So, okay, this is the best way I can example it, yeah. right? So you have five hours, right? If you worked hard, like for example, how we're we're recording Bear Podcast. Yeah, yeah. If you worked hard one day, yeah. Boom, and you got ahead of the week. Then you're ahead of the week. But if you leisured out for two days, you're behind. You might be behind like three months. But in reality, you're not thinking that. You're just you think yeah. you're, you're you're like still there. Exactly. Oh. Cause you think you think you're at this point in your life. Yeah. When realistically you could be way ahead of yourself if you're putting in the work. True. But as of right now, like if we're um if you were to take a pause yeah. at right now, how much of the work that you set up would be ready to roll and and would still be going? With you taking a break yeah. compared to you just taking a break. That's a good mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lot of people don't know that. That's why it's like when you get comfortable and you just stay stale, mm-hmm. you actually, you think you're comfortable, but you don't know that it's actually working against you. Yeah. And I mean, I never really bagged that. Yeah, it's always, because time's always playing. It's yeah. not, there's no, there's no break on time. I know, yeah. There's we no all, break we on time. It just, it just plays, fam. Yeah. It's because when we're, we're on this, fam, that's all you think about. Oh, yeah, uh, 902. And then it's like, I start scrolling, 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 scrolling. Oh, it's already eleven. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you know I mean? if you if you take it in, try try um timing how long you work for. Yeah. Damn. Try timing how long you work for, and then realize okay how much. It's easy to do it in in a job where you have a boss because they they set your hours for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that is true. But in 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 a sense of like okay, I want to accomplish this one thing. Mm-hmm. If I don't have enough time to do it in this amount of days yeah. okay i have to schedule it so that i can be ahead of myself to do it in that amount of days you know mm, yeah so i feel it's it's kind of the same thing as um the george st pierre method what how, was how his method? he when he trains he trains for the next day so what he does he he trains but in order to keep training every day, he doesn't he doesn't push himself too much, but he trains for the next day. Okay. So he'll do the cer- the the perfect amount of time. Yeah. That he's sore, but but still, but still motivated. Ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So he's sore enough to rest, but it's like the perfect threshold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like my arms are tired for this, <laughs> but because I have a rest on arms, I can work on this for legs, oh. and then on that day it's the chest that works good. And then it just keeps going and you can keep working out every single day. Yeah. But the rests are balanced out. Word. You know I'm, I'm, I mean? I'm more of a, a John Jones method type guy. Just rest. So just party all the time and then just like crash. <laughs> nah, just kidding. But, but his method was kind of smart. Yo, he, In would, reality, he would deadass just go party crazy. No, and then it, if he lost, then yeah. he would just be like, oh, fuck, I just lost. Which makes sense though. Because it's like, yeah, you can't really, you have to blame it on yourself. There's no, like all that training you did. Only mattered just because you partied. It made sense. I th- 
Yo, I think there's um, there's a word for that. Fuck, what's it is called? It, is it taking off the pressure? No, it no, did no. Kind of no. take off the pressure for him too. It's self sabotage. That's what it's called. Self sabotage. Yeah, I guess. It's, yeah. it's called self sabotage. So you do shit to make you to make you fail, so you can give yourself an excuse. Exactly. Yeah. So you yeah. can you can say like, oh, um, I didn't get that just because I didn't work hard enough on it. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't backfire on him because he actually won the fights. You know what I mean? Yeah, he always won so, the fights. So the only time, the only. <laughs> <laughs> the only time that uh, he would actually like feel that self sabotage if he was actually lose, which he never did, so it made sense why it kept working. Yeah, he never lost, bro. Yeah, the yeah. only time he ever lost was because of a a no contest yeah. or not a no contest. He got disqualified. Exactly. And the, the funniest thing was when uh, uh remember when George St Pierre and uh, John Jones was at the same party and John Jones didn't want to see, didn't want to look that way because he knew that uh, Pierre was there. No, that's not why. He yeah, just no, didn't was, see him. No, yo, that that reaction was so fake. That was like a really bad acting. He was like. Oh, no, hi. he just didn't see bro, it. Bro, no, you can't tell me. Bro was scared. Bro was scared. No, 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 no. They're homies. They're homies, yeah. actually. They're homies. <laughs> but imagine getting into the fight that night, fam. And you have to fight George St. Pierre and John Jones. Oh, at a bar? That's fucked. <laughs> You're fucked. Oh my God. Why is he calling? I don't know. Both of us? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Dude. <laughs> Wait, where's the song go? I forgot. I put it in for Ethan. No, no, no. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, okay. There, there's a there's a movie I want to talk about real real quick. Yeah, yeah. This is um this is this lines up for Good Friday actually. Oh shit. Okay. I, I just want to say it to you. Yeah, we need it, some holy stuff but since we've been talking. I want to say it to you because it it kind of it kind of lifts up your spirits. You okay, know what I'm bet, bet, bet. There's it's rare you see a movie where it's it's almost like jumpers jump. Oh, there is. So it's no, it's almost like jumpers jump in the sense of. We get you or we get you interested by this part, but it's actually about okay, these things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So check this out. There's this movie called The Book of Eli. And I've never watched that. It's Denzel Washington. Okay. I didn't know, but it's Denzel Washington that produced and I think wrote it too. Mm. But it's crazy because I didn't expect the ending to be like that. What was the so ending? The whole movie, it's him in a post apocalyptic world. It's after pretty much what World War Three would be. Yeah. The whole world is just fucking like nuked up and the only people there are ravagers tr killing themselves, killing each other, taking food, whatever they can get, like okay. eating rats off the ground, this and that. Yeah, yeah. Now, the main character, he's one of the most skilled fighters like in the land. Yeah. All, he, all he does is he has like a machete and he has a gun. He goes around, people try to fuck with him. Yo, tsh, tsh, tsh. it's light for him. Yeah. Easy body. He finds his way into this town. Now, in the town, they find out that he's carrying a book. And since this is the apocalypse, books are very rare. Mm -hmm. And specific books are very rare. I'll get to that later. Okay. Now, when, when the leader of this town finds out that Denzel Washington's character has this book, he sends every single one of his, of his bodyguards, assassins, mm -hmm. his army to try and kill him. But he's able to just John Wick that shit. What's in the <laughs> book that makes it so important? The book is low-key what gave him his power too. But check this out, fam. It's yeah. so, so fucking interesting. Because at the end, <clears throat> at the end of the movie, what happens is the guy, like the, the town leader, the mob boss, he's able to get the book. Back from the... the he statue. steals it. He steals it from Denzel Washington's character okay, okay. because he, he shoots him. But check this out. He brings the book back home and he opens it. Oh my gosh. Nothing it's in crazy. it? It's crazy. It's so fun. It's like he a opens LOL. the book, right? <laughs> Before I can get to that part, yeah, yeah. Denzel Washington's character is still alive. Okay. And he finds his way um, to like another refuge place where he meets like the rest of the civilization of good people. Mm -hmm. Now, bro opens up the book. Let me go back to the, the mob boss. Mob boss opens the book. And he sees. And this is the book that he really, really wanted. Because he told everyone, I need this book because I want to control the world. And the only way I can do that is through the words that are in here. Mm -hmm. That's the only way people will believe in me and put their faith in me, right? He opened the book. It's blank. Oh. It's Braille. It. It's oh, Braille. Why? Denzel Washington's character the whole time <laughs> was blind. Then how the fuck was he? Oh, because it gave his powers? And check this out. At the end of the movie, 
when Denzel Washington is in the sanctuary with all the good people, yeah, yeah, he knocks on the door and he says, "I have something of great value," and he goes, "What is it? What is it? I have a King James Bible." And he goes, "Where? Where? Where? Where is it? Where is it?" Yeah, he goes, "I'll give it to you. Just bring me paper." And he starts writing every single word God, in the Bible, and bro's blind. Yeah. So he was able to pack up all those people in the blind? movie John Wick blind. That's kind of and imagine the 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 plot twist on the on the mob boss. Yeah. Where he was he saw the book and that shit was just braille. He can't even read it, bro. <laughs> Wait, you can translate Co- it though. In the braille? Yeah, I, I I can you? Damn, it's the apocalypse. Oh true, yeah. You- <laughs> I was gonna get, I was gonna get- <laughs> on my phone. Yo, let me just get my phone. Oh, you out. know what's <laughs> funny too? He actually had a wife that that's blind and could read braille. Yeah. But the wife just hated him. <laughs> <laughs> So she that guy hated was, him so much that, that, that she, she would never tell him anything. <laughs> it's like read it Bro's to me. Just cooked. Bro just cooked. No, but yo, okay. If this was in this generation, yeah, the, the, that shit would have been translated immediately. Yeah, well, in, in the apocalypse though, <laughs> yeah. in the apocalypse where nothing's around anymore, that's it. I feel if the apocalypse happens, I'm really gonna. Never mind. I'm not gonna say that. Okay, I don't say if, that. If there was apocalypse, uh-huh. if there was an apocalypse, would be something like you would carry on to. As a trinket or like a, mm. I don't know, something to boost your morale. Just like a picture of my family, probably. Because mm-hmm. if I do die, like, I would rather go out looking at a picture. You know what I mean? Like, the, the zombies biting. Let me just remember. I bet. I'll be good. Oh, I was thinking about something. No, yeah, I was thinking you, about like, You're ready to survive. <laughs> no, no, no. I was thinking about, I was thinking about how, how are you going to keep, like, your boredom away? Because oh, you think about it, it's, it's probably going to be kind of boring still. Yeah. So you only allowed one thing? You only allowed one thing from the past universe or oh. the past, like, world. <laughs> no, I, would get, I would get those uh, ADHD fidget things. <laughs> so, like, the cube. The spinner, the spinner? Yeah. No, like, the cube with, like, Rubik's the... Rubik's Ole, I know what you're With, like, the, the thing on the top and then toy? the two things at the bottom and, like, yeah. I think I think I would use, um... I think it would have, like, an MP3 player. MP3? Oh, because it survives the test of time? No, it wouldn't survive the test of time. Oh, if we can just bring anything from, like, yeah, past like, world. Why MP3? Yeah, I guess you can still phone. charge it, though. Yeah, you have to, so you can still charge it. So a phone would even... You even want to bring a phone, you know what I mean? Nah, your MP3 player would go crazy. You know why? How? Because if you get in a battle, if you get in, like, in sad times, the music could help you, bro. Because you can't hear music any other way now. Because... Think about it. Think about it. If you have an MP3 player, yeah, you have access to music. Other people wouldn't have access. Then why to don't music. you just bring a phone then? Tell me this, bro. Yeah. If, if we all go on a marathon and three of us have music, oh yeah, I'm I'll running the fuck out of you. Exactly. But the, like the people, that's... the people with music would go crazy or would, would like survive longer. Yeah, I guess that's the truth. But at the same time, it's like why MP? Why not just a phone that you can play music off of? It's the same shit. Wait, what? Why, why an MP3 player and you just get a phone with that that plays music? Oh, you can have a phone. That's the same yeah. shit. Oh, just okay. M- so just MP3, something. just music, music okay, in music. general. You would just bring music. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't have like a phone thing because you wouldn't, you couldn't connect to internet. Yeah, so maybe like you'll have you five five days like that you're 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 moving shit. like um that guy in the movie, and then right after it's braille. You don't know what the fuck's going on. Yo, what if what if the apocalypse really causes everyone to go blind though? Because if if a uh, if a nuclear explosion happens, it's gonna yeah. be bright as shit. No, true. What, what I'm really scared of is um because I've never been into something where that has a lot of sand. Yeah. Sandstorms. On some dune shit? Yeah, on some dune shit. Damn. Yeah. Sandstorms. W- would we even have sandstorms? Like, we don't have sand, bro. No, no, but it's like, no, like, just <laughs> Not like, in Toronto. No, just say, like, I'm in, like, Dubai or something. Yeah. And, like, the sandstorms happen there. I'm like, when I'm a kid, I really thought, like, sandstorms aren't really that serious. Because it's like, you just cover your eyes. Mm-hmm. But fam, that shit is serious, bro. Like, you can actually, like, die from a sandstorm. Yeah, people died from sandstorms. Or, like, like you, your vision could get really fucked up just because it's that bad. Mm. You know what I mean? I heard the way we're moving right now and the way our generation is moving, we're all going to be almost deaf. Deaf. By the time oh. we're, like, 60. Bro, I, there was this kid in my class in grade 6. Mm-hmm. when he would, Whenever he would listen to music, he would have it full blast. And I'm like, yo, I wonder what how that kid's ears is now. Mm. You know what I mean? I listen to music really low. I use, I, I blast that shit. Really? Bro. Yeah. I I like whenever whenever I'm watching something or I listen to something, yeah. I always put it super low. <laughs> but it's not because of my health. Why? It's just because I'm like used to it like that. Yeah, fam. Uh, w- remember when on that um the Tekka concert we got uh the VIP? Yeah. Fam, I Loki at the beginning was kind of weird because I didn't want the VIP seats because. You're right with VIP. You're right beside the stage, and the be- the bass it, is it's not fun hitting man. you, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? You can't even understand lyrics because that's how bad the bass is. Yeah, that's I not didn't have fun. earplugs or anything. 
Do you think at that point it's not even for enjoying music? It's just for sounds and frequencies, bro. Yeah, that too. But even just um, just so you can say you were there. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's what most concerts are now? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of the times you don't really even get to see the the artists if you have shitty seats. Yeah, because at the same time, once I take a picture of like a concert, mm-hmm. oh, I'm good. Everyone knows that I'm at this concert. It's a fucked up mindset, but it's like shit. Sometimes I, I put my phone down trying to enjoy it. But, like, the main thing I'm going there for is the pick. Why, though? Why is that? I don't know. I actually don't know. Like, is there something you want to show people? Yeah, the VIP thing? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm trying to show them. No, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. No, but, like, but on, like, stuff, on, like, on, like, a deep level, like, what? Like, why do we do that? I don't know. Like, what, actually, what do we really want out of that? Because I think, I think that people are invested into my life when they really aren't. Mm. You know and I mean, it's like, it, like that... I don't know if it's a main character thing, but mm-hmm. it's like every every time we step on social media, we become something else, kind of. A lot of people, and they post because they think, oh, yeah, let me share this because that person wants to know what I'm doing right now. But mm-hmm. it's not like that. Mm-hmm. I think that is the, the root, to be honest. Like, um... Pe- attention? To get more attention? Yeah. And we're feeling like we are the main attention. Because mm-hmm. that's what social media kind of makes us feel like with all the likes and the shares. Does it get more shares to show something like that, though? I don't think so. I feel like that's more just for to for a status thing. Oh, status, yeah, status to too. show to show that you you're you're at this level of something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that blue check, bro. Shout out Kadeem. W the blue check video. Probably the greatest <laughs> blue check video I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> those those that know know. <laughs> Got me a check. I got a check. That That's a fire so video. Fire. I'm not gonna oh lie. God. That's my. Fi- that might be my favorite reel Shout ever out, made, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I wonder if this guy watches the podcast. No, he probably doesn't. <laughs> but I think about it sometimes. I'm like, if if I were to just post shit, yeah. just to post shit, just like, what would I really, really want to put out? Regardless the of the stuff that you have right now, or no, you probably wouldn't. I don't know. I feel I feel the way I post is, is very business. It, yeah. It's goal oriented. Yeah, it's brand oriented. It's no, it's goal oriented. Like I, I want this done, so yeah. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this content for it. That's true. It's not necessarily like I'm doing um I'm doing a post to to show some to prove something. I'm not yeah. really trying to prove like nothing. Mad, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to like get eyes to that thing. Yeah, like Spider Man, hella Spider Man. Yeah, I'm trying to get eyes to that thing. You were at Comic Con, right? Yeah. <laughs> there was there was two guys. Uh, I don't know if you know him, Hamza. Nah. So Hamza and his boy, they went to Comic Con and they they took shrooms right before Comic Con, right? That's crazy. And, and you know how Comic Con is all costumes, like yeah, you, so they, they're tripping actually, out. You actually feel like you're actually in a video that's game. That's like that's like a the audience of. What do you call episode? Fam, he was talking to... He started talking to little kids and he just... He he said that, yo, bro, as soon as he seen like a, a like a villain character, <laughs> this bro started psych- psyching out and he's like, yo, stop the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw him. He was dressed up as Spider-Man too. No, I don't know if I saw him. He was in Tim's. He was in Tim's. He was the only Spider-Man at Comic-Con with Tim's At on. Toronto Comic-Con? Yeah, Toronto Oh, he's like a local creator? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I never heard they're, of him. They're actually. pretty big too. Yeah, they're pretty big too. <laughs> that was so, go and the, the the caption is so good. Going to, go to Comic Con on shrooms. That's crazy. That's crazy. <gasps> I feel like you would you would dead ass think the characters are real and talk to yeah, them dead like ass. the characters. Now imagine fucking like T- DMT. You go to Comic Con. Oh yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> like the 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 Avatar little kid starts starts airbending in front of you. Yo, what if if you think about it like this, it, what if you see somebody just in real life yeah. that look like an anime character and speak like that person, but they're not cosplaying? What if that's actually like their identity? The fuck? So what if you meet somebody that has an interesting identity? They would sound like an anime character or yeah. they would do some weird stuff that seems out of normal, but they're actually like that. You think that exists? Or do you think it stems from what they've already watched? Probably. Probably from what they've already watched. something that just exists naturally though like just a uh, come you come out the womb you're you're sick you yeah i know no, that has to be no i don't know you think it all stems from from it has to bro because you learned t- yeah because you give and take you, you yeah i mean some some may be a part of it but like the weird side that attracts you to people that could be from deadpool you know what i mean mm. a lot of people want to be like deadpool i don't i don't understand the thing behind it but what's the deadpool thing it's like they just want to act like nonchalant but like badass at the same time that's deadpool's like personality right dead deadpool is the he's he's like a psychopath he's yeah. like he's like shooting people and then thinking about thinking about fluffy stuff exactly yeah that's the thing where it's like it's so cool because it's like you're supposed to be a professional superhero but you're actually not yeah 
Well, he's not actually a superhero. To be honest, I would consider him a superhero. He's that- like he's like a he's Loki a villain. He's not really a superhero. Really? Yeah, <laughs> he's honestly not a superhero. Really, he just kills everybody he wants to kill. <laughs> to be honest, that's sick. That's sick. That's kind of why I wanted to make Raph because it's similar to Deadpool, where I feel nobody would really be a hero, bro. Uh-huh. Like Deadpool is the most relatable to people because I think the more most people wouldn't save. That's true. They would just treat life like no yeah, disregard exactly. you know yeah, what i mean yeah. especially if you have powers nobody can stop you if you're invincible yeah would you let the police stop you no i'm doing i'm robbing a bank just for fun you know what i mean like if you couldn't die damn if you really couldn't die what would you do Psh, fucking you would dead ass gta like cheat yeah. codes it wouldn't be fun after like the first hour, I'll be like, "Oh, I'm actually never dying. I can do anything. Uh, it's whatever now." Damn. Yeah. I think um, I think if you if you were if you were actually like given superpowers and shit, you would be forced as a slave to like work for the government. Though you wouldn't be able to just like live your free life. They would find a way to use you. Oh, but that's like if you expose if they find out. But you don't have to tell them. Wait, what? You don't have to tell them if you got a superpower. No, they would find out, bro. Really? They would find out, fam. I don't know. I don't think I was told I was told by somebody like all it takes to get all your information is just an email an email yeah shit but what does an email tell you though I don't know so I was in a I was in a uh a ride with an uber driver and he he literally told me like he had this person that is a is a cyber security like hacker Mm -hmm. and they get hired to test the security of high level banks so they would get hired to try and hack into them okay and you know, like obviously do malware, blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. So he asked, like, if you were to try and hack somebody, how would you hack them? Like, all I need is their email. That's crazy. Email, yeah, but that's something you can just get off off Google. I swear. Yeah, you don't even. That's and some even... people just give out emails, you know. Yeah, and on like you know the sp- so oh like the spam emails when they say click this link, that's all they need, right? Oh, you know why? It probably to get the email is just the first step. That's probably what and it is. And then they start going yeah, from they there. Yeah, they probably go from there. Yeah, that's scary still. That's why two two identify, uh, what's that? Two, two FA. Two factor, yeah, two-factor identification. You're yeah. going to end up like Josh, fam. Yeah, no, <laughs> hopefully not, bro. Get hacked like Josh, bro. <laughs> Did you guys go back in the sushi place yet or no? What sushi place? The one where he the curse first started. Oh, no, we haven't yet. Okay, okay. But if, if we go back, I'm going to record it. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Because if this is actually a curse, yeah. we have to like... I'm going to document it to see like what we can do to change shit or if it works on other people. Yeah. You know what happened uh, in the Josh episode two? The audio went missing. You're for capping, for you're a part when he started talking about the Josh curse. Shut <laughs> up, bro. All right, we'll end it there. Thank you for watching <laughs> this episode of the Jumper Jump Podcast. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that good yes, stuff. Sir. Make sure to go down, down below... Uh, I mean, make sure you go to Apple, Spotify, and download those episodes. We love you guys, man. Make sure if you haven't already, go watch Spider-Man Raph. Click this video right here. Also, if you made it all the way to the end, leave down in the comments what we should get as a poster, and I'm going to put it up. True. Whoever has the most likes on their comments, oh. I'm getting that poster. Yes, sir. All right, thank you for watching. Jumpers Jump out. Deuces.